Okay. All right. So data, of course, everywhere you have data now. Data is uh, you need to is collected at every point when you make your purchase, when you book your flights, when you post in social media, anything, you are just generating data. Of course, we know that there are majorly two types of data, structured and unstructured data. The structured data is the one we are going to use for this training. But the unstructured data is um, social media posts, texts, emails, uh, videos, music, all those type of data are unstructured. They are hard to actually analyze and collect. That's why um, when we get to SQL, you will see all call RDBMS, Relational Database Management System, where you store structured data. So uh, data is ubiquitous. So anything you are doing, as I'm talking to you now, I'm releasing data. So the world has come to that stage where lots and lots of data are generated on a daily basis. That's why there is increase for and demand for people that know how to analyze and interpret it. Uh -huh. It was last three, four years that data analysis started raining and started becoming very popular. Not as if data was not there before. So, but data literacy started uh, increasing. So the ability to analyze, interpret, and question data is now an increasingly, sorry, an, an increasingly valuable skill. So to any organization, no matter your sphere, once you know how to analyze and interpret data, they will value you a lot. And then looking at uh, what is data science versus data analytics, what is, it, what is actually the difference? So data science is the process of building, cleaning, and structuring data sets to analyze and extract meaning. While data analytics, on the other hand, refers to the processes and practice of analyzing data to answer questions and gain insight. So um, um, for me, I can also add that data science uses algorithm and machine learning techniques. Aha. Data science uses algorithm and machine learning techniques and the whole lot. But in data analytics, we are asking the question of why, how, and um, a whole lot of other things that we do. So data science in business, okay? So these are the application of data in business. You can use it to gain customer insights. What are your customers saying? who and who are buying your product, if you're a business person, you can use it to increase security. So when you have data, a lot of historical data, you can use it to build, it, uh, build up a machine learning algorithm that can detect uh, fraud, that can predict uh, the type of sales you can make. You can use it to inform internal finances, streamline manufacturing, predict future events, and a whole lot. Uh, I am a health person, so I won't be talking so much about business. If it's in public health and medicine, I will tell you a lot of application there. But there are budgeting and forecasting, risk management, marketing and sales, research. Without, with the, we know that without read data, we cannot do research. Research is embedded on data, facts that you collect. So we have four types of analytics, according to Harvard. We have the descriptive analytics, that looks at uh, to, uh, to understand and examine and describe something that already happened. We have the diagnostic analysis where you are asking why. You have the predictive analysis where you want to use past what happened in the past, the data collected over time to predict what will happen in the future, all things being open. You have the prescriptive analysis. After your analysis, what do you now prescribe that we should do? So these are the four levels of analytics at for this particular class. When we get to research, we have uh, another, that, that is the way we also look at it there. Then, familiarize, familiarizing yourself with the data landscape. So what is the process of data analysis? Number one, it starts with data generation. It starts with data generation. You must generate data first before you start talking about analysis. Then data collection, data processing, data storage, management, analysis, visualization, and interpretation. So in all this cycle, there are those that specializes on generation, there are data engineers, and there are those that build databases for data collection. So you'll be learning, when we get to SQL, we'll be learning how to build small, small database, how to add tables, how to add columns, how to query tables and so on. Uh -huh. There are also those that are in this process of generating, collecting, and storage. But our work, us that are data analysts, we are here from number six to number eight. 
analysis, visualization, and interpretation. So a good data analyst must be good here. Yeah. You may not be so good in um, storage and building database and stuff, but when the data is given to you, you should be able to analyze, visualize, and interpret. So part of the visualization is the Power BI we are going to do. We are going to learn how to build dashboard, visualization dashboard, how to make them interactive, how to write reports, how to use uh, artificial intelligence in Power BI and stuff. And then how do you interpret? At the end of the day, after your data analysis and your uh, English, you don't know how to interpret to it, to the common man. I don't think you have made any any point. So um, the first question is, what data is collected? How is it collected? And who can access the data? This is data privacy and ethics. I want to take us to, um, yeah, building your data analysis skill. This is where I want us to dwell a bit. What do you need as a data analyst? Now that you've started your journey and you are so much interested in developing this skill, what actually do you need? Number one is critical thinking. A data analyst is somebody that is um that thinks critically. You don't think like the normal person per se. You ask a lot of questions. You must be very uh you must be very inquisitive. Uh, so when you, whenever you see it, well, like me, it has mastered it. Whenever I see a data, or when I see people doing stuff and collecting data, I already started thinking about how to, what can I get from this? So you need to think critically, that's number one. Then you need to have hypothesis. You need to have hypothesis formation and testing. So because every data that you see comes with questions. You don't start, you don't just start getting get the data and start analyzing blindly, no. If it's a research, you call them specific objectives and hypothesis. So what and what do you even want to test? What do you want to find out? I pre example, I predict that a person's likelihood of recommending a product is directly proportional to his satisfaction. So this is what we want to. So you collect data based on this hypothesis, and then you test it. So that is, you don't just collect data blindly, or analyze blindly. Then data wrangling, the ability of cleaning raw data in preparation for analysis. This is a skill on its own. We are going to do data cleaning in Excel. It's going to be, I think, a two a one day class. I'm going to show you guys a lot of um, functions that we use for data cleaning. Your ability to clean data is a very, 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 very good skill. Uh, because if you if your data is not clean, your analysis will be wrong. The mathematical ability, you don't have to become a mathematician, no. But strong mathematical skill, you will please. If you must do well in data analysis, you must love statistics. If you hate statistics and maths, I don't. I don't know whether you have a future here. You must love statistics. You mustn't study. I didn't do statistics in school, but over time, I knew that. Look, I must. I must learn this thing. I must learn. I must understand prediction. I must understand linear regression, machine learning stuff. I must understand them. Uh -huh. So, and then data visualization skill. Your know, skill. In data visualization must be top notch. You must know how to convert those figures to graphs because graphs are more appealing to the non data person than uh, tables and uh, reports. So, data visualization skill is um, that's why we part of your training will involve Power BI. We'll learn how do we use all these charts and where do we use them. That is the document I'm going to share with you people. What type of graph is suitable for this type of data? So, we're going to learn it. There are so many Power BI, there are so many data visualization tools. We have Tableau, we have um, Power BI, but Power BI is free. That's why we are learning, we are using Power BI. Tableau is not free. Tableau was built by Google. Power BI was built by Microsoft. So uh, I can't, uh, it's not, it doesn't make sense to use a software that is not free, that people will now go and pay and start using law. And then Power BI is more used than Tableau everywhere. Because uh, of uh, them programming, and machine learning. This one will come later. You don't start, uh, uh, you don't, I don't recommend people just dumping into programming when you don't have a programming background. So programming languages like Python and R are commonly used to solve complex statistical problems with data. Proficiency in the database query tool like SQL. Please note that why programming skills are valuable, they are not necessarily necessary for beginners dabbling into data. This is what Harvard University recommends. It is important to focus on first 
effectively analyzing and visualizing data to draw conclusions. So uh, when I started my data journey, of course, those days I dumped into Python and, and stuff. And it was very, very, very difficult for me to, to carry them because I was learning the programming, I was learning the statistics, I was learning the a whole lot of, I have not even understood the basics. Uh -huh. So when I see people that want to start the data journal, I'll tell them, please, start with Excel first. When you understand Excel, go and get um, um, a database software, like uh, a database programming language like SPL. Understand it, then build up a data visualization tool, and then you can now go over to Python so that it can be easy for you like that. Then when you want to advance further, you can incorporate machine learning. Uh, the everyday data analysis that we do, many of them does not involve machine learning. But when you want to, if you want to be a data scientist, if you want to do a, a lot of uh, stuff, prediction and build apps and algorithms, you need to double into machine learning and deep learning. Okay, so how do you improve your skills? Embrace the challenge. It's not scary. Data analysis is not scary. It shouldn't be intimidating. I'm always here to guide you the much I can. Then consider opposing viewpoints. Of course, you know that you, you will not always be right. So try to learn. Then there is this thing that I used to, I will emphasize on it when we do research, when we come to state and um, search, that correlation, correlation does not mean causation. There's all called correlation. Two events having relationship with each other or two data sets having relationship with each other doesn't mean that one is causing the other. So we are going to, also look at that in the course of our training. So, uh, play games or brain teasers. Of course, when you are tired, uh -huh. data can make you sometimes. When I expect, when I inspect or look at a, a, a bad data, an unclean data, sometimes I get tired. So I, I you can find some other thing to do while you are uh, trying to feel, uh, um, to feel, uh, structure it out. Learn from real world examples. So the data I'll be giving to you guys are real world data. Find a community and engage with and ask these uh, questions. Please, always ask questions. All right. Okay, so these are the data courses you can do. Yeah, but these are the courses that have had, um, advertised. These are the ones they offer. So you can find them out if you can afford them. And, Go ahead and see if you can do them. So there are, there are data applications in every spec. If you are in public health or if you're in clinical sciences or uh, research or stuff, I wouldn't expect you to be doing courses in business. You should look for data applications in your field. You get, so the Excel that you are learning, the Power BI you are learning, how do you apply it to the data that you are using for your work? So, all right, let's double into I believe this has given us a foundation. Let's double into Excel. Um, we don't have much time, so let's quickly double into this. As we learn, we do practical. So, sorry, this was the material I used when I did a training with um, the American window the last two years. And this was the same material we used. So, I know that a lot of you have seen Excel. Some of us might even be proficient a little. You know, what, you know how to do one or two things there, but uh, you've not really sat down to learn, to see, to start from the scratch, to understand what is this Microsoft Excel? Why is it always um, advertised? Everywhere you see any data training, they start with Excel, or they must teach Excel, or they must mention Excel. Excel is the number one world spreadsheet software that we use to, uh, uh, to 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 store data, you get Excel has two data uh, boots, uh, two storage file boots, XLS. That's a data that has rows and columns, or CSV, uh, comma separated values, a data that come as, that comes as, as text. So whenever you communicate with the database and you want to uh, harvest data from a database you always put it in Excel, either as CSV or as, as SLS. That's why Excel is very important. It does a lot of things, a lot of things. Uh, your ability to use it depends on how much you know. 
So Excel is a software program used for calculation, charting, and database to present information in form of a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet consists of rows and columns. A spreadsheet is also called a worksheet. The intersection of a row and column is called a set. And then one or two spreadsheets is, what is called a workbook. So these are what we are going to learn today and uh, possibly today and tomorrow if we are fast and if you guys are fast. I, I, we are going to take it small, small, but these are what I, I plan that we learn. So, but please, I want to at this point, please with us, if you are going to continue with this class, please, this training is not free. This training is not free. It's, uh, it's, it's, I, I said people can pay on two installments, 75% and 25% later. Uh -huh. But please, it's not free. So by tomorrow, the only participant that will be allowed here is the, the paid participant. This today's class is just an introduction. So anybody can join. All right. Looking at the Excel interface, what do you see? Anytime you open an Excel uh, file, what do you see? The first thing you see is um, an active cell. So these are the components of Excel. We have a lot of, I labeled them here, so it'll be easy for us. The first component is um, the active cell. Anytime we say that the intersection of a row, this is a row, but right? this is a column, it's called a cell. Anytime uh, you see a box inside the cell, it means that that cell is active. This is a column, this is a row, and the identity of this cell is G4. G4, not 4D, G4. And here, we put here the address back. This is where the identity of every cell you highlight in a cell always comes and stays. Why this is a formula back. So this is the active cell. Every active cell has a small component here called the fill handle. This small um, box, very small, but very powerful, called the fill handle. We use it to, uh, to fill series and stuff. So this is the formula bar, this is the address bar, this is the row, this is the column, this is the worksheet tab, so you can have plenty of worksheets and rename them. This is the status bar. Um, this is the ribbon tab. This is a quick access to bar, this is the file menu, and this is the title bar. So these are the major or the uh, what you see just at a glance. All right, so an active cell is a cell that is currently selected. So let's look at columns. An Excel worksheet has how many columns? A column is a vertical set of cells. An Excel worksheet has 16,384 columns. Please, if you are writing a standardized Excel exam, they will always ask you this. How many columns does a sheet has? We call it A to FXD because columns are columns are uh, calibrated in alphabet, while rows are calibrated in numbers. Columns are calibrated in alphabet, while rows are calibrated in numbers. So Excel has more rows than columns, not more columns than rows, please. Excel has up to a million rows, while it only has 16,000 columns, 16,384 columns. Please note that. Then for row, a row is a horizontal set of cells. Every worksheet that you see has 1,048,576 rows. So a row is depicted with numbers, while a, a column is depicted with alphabet. So always be in mind that whenever you are, you are dealing, uh, you want to harvest the data from a database, it, a one worksheet of Excel can only take 1,000 rows, and data is entered in rows, not in columns. Data is entered in rows, not in columns. So the fill handle is a small dot that is present at the lower right corner of the active cell. So this is it. It helps you to fill numeric value, to start text, to start ranges, and serial numbers. So that small stuff here we don't call it the fill handle. The address bar, I talked about the address bar. The name box. I normally displays the address of the active cell on the worksheet. So that small input bar at the left side of the window. This is the address bar here. You always see the name of your cell there. 
when we get to well, there's all cost standardized uh, ranges where you are now naming your tables. When we get to tables, you see how we can standardize our tables so that instead of seeing the, the D4 here, you can rename, you, actually, you can actually rename this. Okay, so the formula bar is here, as I said before, is an input bar below the ribbon. It shows the content of the active cell. And you can also use it to enter a formula in the cell. So instead of coming to your cell here to edit formulas, you can simply co just come here and edit it. So that is the formula bar. The title bar is where you put the name of your worksheet. Uh -huh. So this is, if you look close, you see that this is dot, as I said, this is dot XLS. It means that the data contained in this worksheet is a uh, has rules and columns. But if it's dot CSV, you will see text more, more like text, not rules and columns. So every software, just like data that we are going to use for research analysis, has a way a way it treats um, XLS file. It has a way you can import XLS file. It also has a way you can import um, CSV file. So it's, it's good to know that when you have a lot of data and you want your Excel file not to be heavy, you store it as CSV. CSV reduces it because it doesn't have, um, for the uses delimiter, something like comma slash to store, actually store it separate your data. So it makes it lighter. That's CSV for you. So the quick access to bar, okay, this is it here. Quick access to bar. All right, it gives you access to the options which you frequently use. You can even add your favorite option by adding new options there. And then the ribbon bar. Okay, it contains a home, insert, page layout, formula, data review. The worksheet tab, this is the worksheet tab. Allows you to see all the worksheets that are present in the workbook. You will see sheet one, sheet two, sheet three by default, respectively. Remember I said you can rename them. So if I have data I collected from um, three groups of persons, females, males, and um, maybe another group, I can just put them differently there. So the status tab is at the bottom of the Excel window. It gives you an instant help once you start working in Excel. Um, okay, so let's go to data entry. How do you do data entry and how does data stay in Excel. Why is it that when you put in um, a text, and when you put in a number, it doesn't appear the same way? So you need to understand how data are entered in Excel. If you enter a text in Excel, it will align to the left, just like this, or like this is a text, it aligns to the left. But when you enter numbers and dates, they, are all, they always align to the right. But when it becomes alphanumeric, it aligns to the left. Please beware of alphanumeric data because many times they are not analyzable. We still come to that. So that is the way data, many types of data are, are positioned in Excel. Once it's text, it goes to the right. Once it's alphanumeric too, it goes to the right. But once it's number or date uh, data, comes to the left. All right? So these are some shortcuts that I listed here that you can, at your leisure time, at your personal time, look at and learn um, some shortcuts that will save you time and energy. So F2, F4, escape button, the tab button, Control Z, Control D, fill down, fill right, and, and stuff. All right. So at this point, I think we'll, need to do, uh, before I come here, need to do a bit, a little practical. All right. So this is my Excel. I believe everybody has this. We, sh we all have Excel now, right? Abby? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. yes all, right, all right. Okay. So I want to demonstrate some some stuff for you. Aha, uh -huh, yes, there is another document I need to share with you guys too. Getting started in Microsoft Excel. I have it here. Maybe after the class. Uh, we're going to also use it. We're going to do quite a lot, share. Okay, so 
This is a worksheet, all that I've been describing. This is a worksheet. This is an active cell. This is my tray handle. Supposing I put um, January here, and I want Excel to bring it down for me so I can use my fill handle to actually complete it. Suppose I say 2021. I can use Excel to. You wonder why this was not filled systematically. You need to present another um, variable, another data so that you can now select the tree. And Excel can fill it sequentially for you. So let me take, for example, what I want to demonstrate. There are sometimes you can input a data, let me say a name, score, um, okay, score one, score two, score three. All right. This guy is um, Victor. He had um, five, scored 25 here and scored 15. So someone can say total score. Average and remark. So, but this this guy is a legend, Helen. Scored um twenty three here. Scored um thirty two. Scored seventeen. Another person, um, Mark. Scored um thirty four, twenty eight, and nineteen. So, let me get it up to five. Another person, um, Faith. Scored a 52, scored a 39, and scored 21. Last person, Victor. Okay, I'm missing Victor. Uh, Mary. Add 25, 29, and 12. Okay. So just Follow me, I want to demonstrate quite a lot of things here. You are told to get the average of these three person. Of course. Sorry, the total score. What was the total score of this guy? So, of course, as a beginner, or when I started, someone can come and say, the 45 here is in cell C3. C3 plus um, D3 plus E3. If you do this, it's correct. Do you see, what you are seeing here is the value, but what is actually in the formula box is the formula behind it. If you do this, it's correct. But instead of taking this one after the other, cell by cell, you will just use the function called sum, S-U-M, where you pull out the function, you press tab, it comes up, and you just uh, 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 just um, um, highlight the cell, or you specify C3, cell C3 2, this is 2, E3, and get your, your average, sorry, your, your total. Now, instead of doing it one one, your fill handle will help you to finish it up for the other cells. So this is for total score. Now, what is the average of their score? You say equal to every Excel function or every Excel formula, or every Excel whatever starts with an, with an equality sign. You say equal to average tab. You select these three guys too. And then this is the average. Use your free handle to drag it down. You can see that this data is not formatted. Some of them are in 
one decimal place. Some of them are in three decimal, some of them are in four. I don't want this. So the same way I highlighted it, I'll come here and reduce the decimal place. So this is it, this is it. And then, remark. Now, before I go to this, let me ask you, if you want to, for any reason, carry this data or this um, number that are here to another cell, or let me say that you want to copy this total score and move it to another to another cell or to move it to another location, watch what Excel will do. I want to use this to drive home my point. So that when we say pay special, you understand what it means. I want to copy this, for example, to move it here. I just say, I, I highlighted the say control C, move it here, say control V. Can you see that it's giving me something different from what is here? Let me let me let me carry let me copy it and move it completely out of this sheet and move it to a new sheet. Did you see that it's giving me error? So Excel does not allow you to copy and paste just like you do in MS Word. No. Because while you are actually while you are copying has a reference. This formula involved this cell, uh, this three cell. This particular number you are saying involved this three. So these three cells are the reference. We are still going to do reference in the next cell. It's part of uh, our curriculum. You have three types of referencing: absolute reference, relative, and mixed. So please, these are part in every, I, I'm just trying to give a snapshot. These are everything we are going to touch. It's like you the concept. When do you apply absolute referencing? When do you apply um relative? And when do you, how do you lock Excel? So what I'm copying here, I cannot paste it any, anywhere. It will give me either error or give me some other values. So what do I do? I use what we call the paste special function. So I copy, and I say, and I highlight the cell where I want to paste it. Instead of saying Control V, I will say Control Alternate V. So Control Alternate V means paste special. Hmm? So when you want to paste, Excel will ask you, what actually are you pasting? Are you pasting the formula, the value, or the format? Please note the difference between these three. The formula means you are just carrying the formula here and pasting. The value means you are only interested in this value you are seeing without the formula. The format means both the formula and the value. So but what I want to paste is actually the value. So I select value and I say, OK. So, you see, it has pasted exactly what is here. And then here, there are no formulas again. But when you click here, you see the formula. <clears throat> so with this, you can move any range of cell you want to move. But those days, it used to trouble me. Sometimes I'll be asking, ah, why can't I copy this cell and, and move it uh, another another place? So I found out that um, there was a special function called the paste special. So this is what I wanted to show us. So in the course of your data analysis, you will come across functions. And once a cell has functions or needs, please, you cannot just paste. You use the function paste special, control alternative. So paste special allows you to paste data that you've copied in various ways, either formats, values, validation, transpose, links, and more. We are going to talk about transpose now, the GF. What does it mean to transpose your data? So now you can paste values, you can paste formats, you can paste formula. Example, I want to copy this cell to, to here. I will say Control or V, and I'll select values and press OK. Or I want to copy, paste only the format. I'll select format and press OK. Or I want to copy only the formula. I'll press formula I'll, and say OK. So whatever one you want to copy or you want to paste, Excel will allow you to do that. So that is one. Then what about if I want to, if I want to not just paste, I want to also transpose. Transpose means to change the structure of your data from column to row or from row to column. This is the data that is contained in column. I want to change it to a row. So I copy it. 
and I want to maybe paste it here. Now, not as a column, but as a row. I'll still say Control Alter V. Sorry. I'll still say Control Alter V. Values and transpose. This is the transpose function. Hello, can you guys see what I'm doing? No, no, this, the okay, this is just coming up. Okay, so I will say values, and because I'm entering only interested in the value and transpose. So once you click on transpose, or once you activate it, the data will paste this way. Your data will paste this way. So we now have it like this. So sometimes you have a range of cells that you don't um, appreciate the structure. There are sometimes the data will be sent to me in a format. So part of the data cleaning process is that I will transpose some cells to get them to, to column because they were rows before. Uh -huh, depending on how I want to analyze or what I'm looking for. So this is the way we convert either from row, sorry, from, yes, from row like this to column by saying transpose or from column to row by saying transpose. So whichever one that you want to do. That is the transpose function. It's part of the base special function. It comes with it. Now, we are trying to get a remark. Okay, so if I say anybody who gets an average of um, um anybody who receives the cut of of um twenty seven no of um thirty past and anybody that um had twenty nine and below failed. So I want to use this average to now classify the students. Anybody below, everybody 30 and above passed. Anybody below 30 failed. So how do I express that? How what do I do? I'll use the if function. The if function. Um, tomorrow, I'm, we're going to also look at functions in Excel. I'm going to start with the sum, the average, the if, the count if, the normal count, the count if, the sum if, uh, the nested if function, where yeah, you can combine plenty of ifs, um, Boolean algebra function. So you should know all those functions that you can use to wrangle and save your time. So I will say if this guy, Omar, sorry, I will say equal to if this guy, is um greater than thirty greater than or equal to because I say thirty and above greater than or equal to thirty comma pass if not comma paid please note that when you are using the if command, there is always a true and a false. Excel we always ask you, which one is your true, which one is your false? The first one that comes is always assumed as true. So for anywhere that G3 is, is, not, is not greater than, you know, let's look at, call it fail, this is false, this is bad, this is true. So this is the way this guy failed, and it's only this guy that passed. So do we all understand? Do we understand this, or should I repeat? Please, it? I have a question. Yes, go I have ahead. a question, please. Yes. Okay, so um, you said if yeah, G uh, okay. For, for let me just use the one where you have the question now. So it said if G six uh G three is greater than okay, G three yeah. is greater than equal to thirty, right? Yes. Then pass. But then, therefore, for the fail parts, you mentioned if, but you did not 
Like there's no if so the if is no, the drag no, no. is the that's that's what I'm saying. Whenever you have one if, except you have netted if netted if is where you have combination of one or two ifs. Sorry, two ifs and more. We are going to look at that one separately. It's a different bargain. But here, because we only have two conditions, pass or fail, true or false, positive or negative, yes or no, wrong or right. If this is the way we write it. You don't write, you don't come and say if G3 is greater than or equal to 30, pass. If then again, if G3, then you are, it means that you are putting two ifs. It means that you are now nesting okay. it. Yes. Okay, so. so when it's just so if it, that is a true and there is always a false. If that statement is, is a conditional statement, if it does not meet them, then let it give, let it do the other one. That's just what it means. All right. Understood. Thank you. Well done, sir. Any question, guys? Okay. So that is the if command for you. All right, let's go back to the material. So I've talked about the phase special function. You have a formula. You want to move it from one cell to another, you paste special. Or you want to transpose, you paste special. All right. So with space special function, you can perform arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, multiply, and division. So you can even change from negative sign to positive sign. Okay. I've talked about transpose too. You can try with space special function, you can transpose the data we copied from row to column and vice versa. So this data was originally like this, but now it's like this as a um, row. So we've transposed it. All right, so um, let's look at basic formatting. Basic formatting, just basic formatting. Where you have, I'm sure, let me send us a data set that we can all open from here. Okay, because we don't have this material. Let me just send us a data set from here. Just a minute, please. I'm sending it in the chat. Please download this. Um, hold on. Okay, please download this material too. Um, Yes. So the two materials I've sent, please. Kindly download. Do we, did we all get it? Yes, so, yes. I've downloaded already, yes. Okay. 
So open it up so that we can practice together. Hello, uh, other participants here. Yeah. Miss Dixon, Tessie. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yes, we are pulling. Well done. Kate Charles. Can you hear me, Kate Charles? All right, these are this is a material I want us to use for practice. I don't like this method I'm talking on. I just look it. So let's this is a well, very detailed uh, explained material. By the time we are done with the exercises here, at least you can beat your chest. And these are basic basic SS skills. So the first do we all have it? Can we can we go on? Can I go on, please? You can go on, sir. Yeah. Okay, okay. Ebuka Nadema. You can go on. I've already downloaded one. I said it before. Which one are you using now? The okay, the class practice or getting started. Getting started, please. The okay. class practice is for data cleaning. I'm going to use it tomorrow. Okay. Okay, so how do you how do you add uh, this? Select the yellow cells under the amount for fruit. Type this and then press enter. When you are done, you see the result of 170. So this guy bought some fruits and how do you add this up? You have said that before. Instead of saying equal to this guy cell D. Uh, four plus this, but you can say just since sum d4 to d7, d4 to d7. So I simply say this same thing here equal to sum g4 to g7. Now that is all, all that is a shortcut to. Here is another way to add using a shortcut key. Select the yellow cells under the amount for meat. So, for meat, select the, the yellow cell under the amount, then press alternate E and then press enter. So, alternate, sorry, not alternate E, alternate equal to and enter. This is what I just did. Alternate equality sign. Excel will guess the 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 array that uh, the array of cells that you selected. And it will select it automatically. It's a lot of you selecting it. So alternate E is also a shortcut. Instead of you typing the normal sum and stuff, you can just say alternate E. Select this. Oh, sorry, not alternate um, equality sign, enter. Alternate equality sign, enter. Now, let's add only numbers above 50. For item, yeah, let's add only numbers that are above 50. So this is above, this is, okay, this is 50. It doesn't, it's not among. This is 100. This is not among. So we want to tell Excel, instead of adding everything, please add only numbers that are what? Above 60. So what do we what do we do to restrict Excel from carrying out that instruction? What command do we use? We use the if command. But this time around, the sum if because it's were actually summing. I, I don't know whether you people understand what I'm saying. So the if command is used as a restriction statement, just like in SQL, the where, the where function is used to restrict. When you say select uh, customer sales, blah, 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 as still from 
customer ID. Where? Aha. Uh -huh. You say you want you don't want to restrict. And we are works with uh, uh, operators. So here too, say some if. So you got equal to some if. So you are, what you are saying is some all of them if. Sorry. Summarize if cell D um eleven to D fifteen comma. So first thing is to put the range of the cells first, and then you now put your conditional statement. You put the range of the cell first. This is from from here, and you now put your conditional statement. So you say. 50 and above. Sorry, greater than 50. Remember that greater than 50 and 50 and above are not the same thing. If you say 50 and above, it means greater than and equal to 50. But here you say 50 and above. So you say um, uh, double quotation, greater than 50. And we close ourselves. So what the software will do is that it will sum only numbers within that range. That greater than 50 only. Did you guys understand what I did here? So I want you to do this one, please. Everybody, do this one. I wish you can share your screen so that I can see what you're doing there. Uh, anybody that can share screen can. I permitted you. So here, here I want you guys to sum only numbers that are um, less than. Some numbers that are less than 50 for me. In this cell, uh, some numbers that are less than 50 for me. Please, quickly. When you do it, you can share your screen if you're using a PC and show me. Numbers that are less than 50. Numbers that are less than 50. Quickly. Are we there? Yeah, 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 hold on. Okay. If you've done so, let me know. Some numbers that are less than 50. Mm So, anybody done? So, we we'll say some if. Remember, there is some if table and there is some if function. It's a function that we are using, not the table. This is table and this is function. So, some if this cell to this cell, comma, conditional, comma. Conditional uh, statement. If I said less than fifty, I close my bracket. So this cell and this cell are the only ones that are less than fifty for cookies and pies. So these two items are the only one that the amount is less than fifty. So forty plus twenty will give me sixty. So that is how we do conditional statement. We can also say. Get me the average of items that are 
greater than 100. Get me, not the sum now, get me the average of items that are greater than 100. Is there an item here that is greater than 100? Let's check. Get me the average of items that are huh, greater than 100. So, can you see? No answer. Error. Why? Is there an item here that is greater than 100? Hello? Sorry, can I ask the question again? Sorry, your voice was a little, a little bit cracking from my end. Okay, sorry. I said, get the average items here that are less than, that are greater than 100. Average of items that are greater than 100. Can you do that? I don't think yes. so. Can you just give an example then? Is there an item? <laughs> okay, I just said, so you use the command. What's the command? What's the function? Sorry. There are Average. no items greater than 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, of course, Excel will um, so give you an error. Because what you're asking it does not have it. When you say item greater than 50, uh -huh. you can see the average of this guy and this guy. Sorry. Um, yes, 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 yes. Okay, let me use a much lower value. The average of item that are greater than 20. Okay, so this guy is greater than 20. 50 plus 100 plus 40 plus 20. The average of this is 60. So that's how you place your conditional statement there. Yeah. All right, so um, on your personal time, you can do this exercise that are below it too. More about the sum function and the sum if function. Okay. So let's get to the field function. We I talked about the, the field handle. I'm also going to show you a more powerful way of using the field function uh, that we call flash field. It's an AI function in Excel that we call flash field. So for example, this plus this, how do we get it? Some these two things, okay? So instead of dragging it down like this, we can simply toggle it two times, click it two times, and it will fill up. Instead of dragging it down like this, please note, you can just say, since you have gotten for the first cell, you can put your uh, uh, mouse on the on the uh, fill handle and talk, toggle it two times. So this is what the fill handle is used for. So rest your cursor on the lower right of the cell until it becomes a cross. Then click the cross and drag down. Cell will automatically fill it up for you. All right. So you can also, from here, you can talk, you you can also as you are feeling as you fill feel this one down, you can feel it by the right by saying this. Um the total of this that's equal to some on this plus this. Okay. Okay, sorry. So you, you can toggle it like this. Since you've got into that for this particular cell, you can toggle it like this. So either way, across the column, across the row, that can be done. 
Now, when we get to data separation, when you have um, a column that contains um, a lot of data inside, but you want to separate it into different columns, we are going to use two methods called text to column, that TTC, and flash field. So there is a more advanced form of this field called flash field. Look at it here. Let me show you. It's under this place. We call it, see the function here. Call it flash field. It's field values automatically. So far, you provide a reference. It's, it saves you a lot of time and energy. Uh -huh. But it's not used in simple, simple like arithmetic language. This one is very easy. When you have data that is tough, but maybe you have emails of uh, people and you want to separate it into first name and second name. Uh -huh. You can apply that flash flow function. When we do that again, we are going to see it. So it's an advanced form of filling. All right. So now, how do you split? In the data stuff into one column, how do you split it? Okay, Tango that mentioned something like that. In the first cell, under first name, type the first name that are in the email, and so on. When you see the faded list of suggestions, press enter. The list of suggestions is called flash field. Okay, I mentioned it before. Flash field detects when you type a consistent pattern and provide suggestion to fill the cell with. When you see the faded list, that is your cue to press enter. All right. So, let's practice. This is, um, we want to separate, we want to separate the first name here and the last name. This, this shouldn't be here. We want to separate the first name here and the last name. Wait. Okay. So the first name here is Nancy and the North. John Kutas, Maria John, and even Maike. So you are told, you are given a data like this, and you are told to separate it into two columns. What do you do? You will be very, 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 very lucky because this data contains a delimiter. It will be easy for you to separate. What is a delimiter? A delimiter is, a, is an object or a symbol that is common to all your data points. If you look at this place, the delimiter here is this dot that is symbol that is common to all of them. It could be slash, it could be hyphen, it could be comma, it could be full, uh, it could be anything. But when you want to do data suppression and you detect a delimiter, you can simply separate. So of course I mentioned that there are two ways. You can use text to code, but here I want to use flash report. We say first the Nancy Andy. So can you see that Excel has detected a pattern? So you can simply press enter and the complete it for you. For the last name, you can see Smith. Not. So the same thing will happen. Press enter. But there are some times that this pattern will not show. Especially when the delimiter is not, is not um, especially when the data is large and on, may, may contain what we call unprintable characteristics. When you download the data from a database, many times it comes as, uh, it can contain a lot of funny, funny things. It can contain uh, missing data, outliers everywhere. So this flash, this uh, uh, filling automatically may not appear. So you should also learn, manually learn how to use the flash function, the flash field function, by saying, the same way you did Nancy, Nancy, Andy, you just select the rest of the cell, 
come here and click on flash fee. But you must provide at least two reference for it so that it can it can it can detect the pattern suppression here. You can now um I like the rest of the cell. Even if there are one million, you just come here and press flash fee. So it will complete it. Then it says meet lots. I like it too. I look for the flash fee function. Please, if you are using Excel 213 or 216, um, 216, I don't know whether I have about, I know that flash fee works in from 219 and above. So when this is Excel 365, that's why I said it, please. For those of you that will be doing this class, please look for higher versions of Excel so that you can have all these functions. So that this is the way we separate a data that has the limiter. Sometimes it can be numbers. Sometimes it can be dates. Sometimes it can be it can be any any data. Sometimes it can be alpha numeric. Sometimes it will not even detect any delimiter. So we use the other rule of suppression, the text to column rule of suppression. But for or here, or all right, let's do this. Split to a column based on delimiter. Now, the flash field is pretty handy, but if you want to split data into more than one column all at once, then it is not the best tool for the job. For here, we are, we are going to use TTC, text to code. This one is always, this one does not support. This one is always handy because it will do the separation at once. So how do we, how do we use this function? How? This is Nancy comma, Smith comma, Osoto limiter, Andy comma, North comma. So who will tell me the delimiter here? Who can tell me the limiter? What is the delim common delimiter here that we can use for suppression? Hello? Comma. Am I alone? Hello? Comma, comma, comma. Comma, very good. All right, very good. What do we do? We select the data we want to separate. We select that the first thing. The data was one separate. Unlike in Flash, we didn't do that. We select the data one separate. Go to our data tab. Come to our data tab here. After formula, you see the data tab. You come to text to column. You click on it. When you click on it, it gives you a pop. Something will pop up. So this is all pop up. It will ask you choose the file type that best describes your data. Do you have a delimiter, or is it a fixed width? Do you have the delimiter, or is it a fixed width? Fixed width is used for numbers. When you want to separate. And alpha numeric, uh, maybe somebody was right in putting, uh, let me take for example, somebody was in putting ages, age of participant, and he was writing 18 years, 25 years, 44 years, 32 years. You know that is wrong. You don't enter data like that. You maintain a, a standard format. Either you leave, either they are all strings, that's um, alphabetical data, or they are only numbers. You can't be writing 18 years, 15 years, no. So you can say 18, 15, 22. So if you want to separate the years from the number, you are going to use the fixed width because in such a, in such, data set, there is no delimiter there. But you, are, you can now use the fixed width and then tell Excel to actually cut it from this particular width. So after 18, it should move from the place where we started, it should cut it off. So that's fixed width for you. Or well, here, our data has the limit, which is comma. So we say next. And then we come and say, and click on the delimiter, which is comma. See it here. Once you click on the comma, the data separation is done. Once you click on the comma, the data separation is done. If the delimiter that it comes with is not here, maybe it's slash, 
forward slash or backward slash. You can copy here and say and add it. So whichever one. Because sometimes I know some data that can contain hyphen separated by some other uh, funny funny things that you will see. So comma, you see how it has separated in two three cells. Then the next thing is to do is to be careful of where it will now pour the separation into. You say next. If you say finish, what it will do is to replace this one and put first name here, second name, which I don't want. You see, it is highlighting, it's highlighting this one now. This one, this black, this one is give black color. We replace this, which I don't want. I want it to start from here so that I can still keep this. So I will click on this arrow and select where I want it to start from. And then I will um, I will go back and say finish. So once I say finish, so this is what I have. This is what I have. So I've neatly, I've neatly separated data into three columns. Neatly. Neatly. So you could have plenty things inside here, and you want to separate them all at once, not one after the other. One and one, not one column by one column by one column. No. But all at once, you use text to column. Now, using text to column, do you have delimiter or do you have fixed width? How do you want to base your separation on? You, for this one, we have a common delimiter. It was easy. Uh -huh. Now, please note, please note, if you want to join these cells back, maybe the first name, last name, and company, you want to join them back, who will tell me the function that joins uh, data that are in different cells, all in one. Please, do we have any idea? Do we? Uh, I don't know. I don't know the formula, but I know if you if you highlight the the three columns and then click click match, I think that does it. I don't know if I'm correct. But... No, 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 no. Sorry, no, no, no. Not you didn't get it. Who else? Miss Dixon, any idea? Victor, any idea? So you use hello. Can I go on? You can go on. You can go on, sir. No oh, idea. You can go on. Oh. You use the command called concatenate. Have you heard about it before? Uh, yes, in fact. Where? Where did you hear about it? Python, Python. Uh -huh. So it means the same thing there. So you con when you concatenate cells, it means that you want to join them together. So. Well, maybe uh, it's not. Uh, as part of data clean, I may just mention it and show you guys how, how to use it. But um, it's not something I always do, but that function is there in case you will need it one day. Okay, so as you separate using text to code or flash view, so if you want to join them back, you're going to concatenate them. Then add this comma as the limiter. Okay. Just a minute, please. All right. Number four, the transpose function. I've mentioned that before. 
the transpose function. What does transpose mean? You need to rotate, switch data around by transposing it. So you want to rotate um, yourself. You want to rotate from column to row, row to column. So let's transpose this, this guy as we saw it here. What was the command for transpose? Can you guys remember? What was the command? Hello? I want this uh, training to be interactive or I don't want to be the only one talking. Control alternate V. Control alternate V, sorry. Yeah, correct. So you copy, first of all, you copy. Then wherever you want to paste it, you say control alternate V. Value. Select value, select transport. So, and on that. Okay. Let's assume that you want to transpose with a formula. So you want to see maintain the formula by the transpose. So look at this. Sometimes you don't want to copy and paste to transpose. In this case, you can use a formula to transpose rows and columns. This is how you can do that. To transpose this data, you need to select some blank cells first. So the data on the right has six columns and two rows. Yeah. You need to select the opposite two columns and two rows and six rows. Do this by selecting the yellow curve. This is kind of tricky. So pay, pay close attention. With those cells still selected, type the following, but don't press enter. So let's try it. Let's try it. You want to transpose the set? Um, to trans yeah, yeah. Select the blank, some blank cells first. So we select this. Type the following equal to transpose, yeah. C33. That is it. To H. 44, which is the last cell, H34, sorry. Press um, Control Shift and Enter. So I transposed and I still retained the formula. This thing I have just did, you could have just simply also done control at an AV and selected formula in the tools to give you the same thing. You know, Excel has plenty things of they want to. So this 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 one was shortcut. So let me redo it again. Let me redo it again. I selected the cell I wanted to. Paste. I said it will to transpose this guy to this guy. And then instead of pressing enter, you say control shift enter. Uh -huh. So it retains the formula I had here. Sorry, it retains the transpose formula with it. Okay. Okay, so there are some um most more read ups here. Please. When we are done with the class, go through the this and everything here was explained detailed in a very detailed way. Go through them and and redo them with, with uh, by yourself and get yourself because many of these things why people don't actually 
have this skill at the end of the day is that they only listen, come to class and listen. But they don't bring up a start time to practice. So please, this particular material is um yeah, is is a whole lot. It, it describes it bit by bit. Now, number five, sort and filter. Sort and filter. What, what does it mean to sort? What does it mean to filter? Um, there are sometimes you can have a data like this, and someone tells you to please sort out all the beef or sort out all the meat. Sort out. So sorting means to arrange data by a, a particular criteria. Let's say you want to you want the department in alphabetical order. This. Remember that data is entered in rules like this. So this particular department, see the category, see the cells in October, see the cells in November, see the cells in December. This particular one, see the cells in October, November, December. So it is entered in rows like this, not in columns. So whenever you want to sort a particular column, remember that that column you are sorting came uh, simultaneously with other data. So you can come and say, um, okay, let's say you want to sort the department in alphabetical order, click the department column and then click home, sort also. So let's do this. Click the, the, the department column, or select the department column, um, come to home, come to sort. This is sort and filter here. And then I say sort from A to Z. So continue with the current selection. So you see that the Excel has sorted it, but it didn't sort the order that came with it. You see that this data is wrong. It sorted this one from A to Z, bakery, daily, blah, blah, blah. But it didn't sort this other one. So this is the wrong way to sort. This is the wrong way to sort. For you to sort appropriately, please convert that piece of data to a table first. You select it and press Control T. That's table. So that when you now say um, sort from A to Z, as it is sorting this, it's also sorting the others. Please then let me redo what I just did. When you see data lay, lay follow like this, there are much you cannot do with this. So you convert it to a table. Exercise where you want to sort. When you want, you when you want to use one particular column to address the rest or to sort out the rest. You want to sort department from A to Z in alphabetical order, but other data, other details that follow the tree should also sort with it. When you sort only this guy, it will not work. Another way of doing it is to select all of them and sort and do and use custom sort. Select all of them and use custom sort. So when you're not asked, you sort by department. So everything sucks. But to make it much more faster, even though we've not reached there, we are still going to touch tables. This is tables. You make it much, much faster. What I do in my everyday work, I just convert it, it to a table. And then I will now use the filter button here. Once you convert the data to a table, the filter button appears on each, uh, on each column. I now use the filter button here to do my sorting. I can sort by color, I can filter by color, I can text filter, I can sort from A to Z. So it becomes easier. So those are the two ways. Custom sort, you have to select everything. So if your data is one million, so you know you have to waste a lot of time selecting. So just say control T. You don't even need to highlight anywhere you put your cursor to select all of them automatically. 
and then once it's in the table form, you can sort with anything. You can even sort these um, values from largest to smallest. All right. So that is sort and filter for you. You can sort by date or even color. There are so many ways to sort in Excel. Here are the two more ways to sort, but this time you use the right click menu. So you can sort from oldest to newest. Aha. Uh -huh. Now this has been converted into a table. And now see the filter buttons. From oldest to newest. The rules get sorted in ascending order by the expense date. Someone field, okay. Okay, so, so uh, someone field three cells with yellow. You can sort the rules by that color. I click a yellow cell and then sort, put selected cell color on top. So, uh, well, I don't see any practical application for this. Um, well, it's okay. So many times, okay, okay. Someone can decide to sort, um, um, and I'm um, sort by color. Then let's take, for example, the highest, the highest fees that people pay, pay for hotel. These are the three highest. When they use yellow color to indicate the three highest or the 10 highest or whatever. So Excel will do that for you. So fast forward, this is sort and filter. So sorting as I have explained means to order your data. Uh, we I use it majorly, the practical application, I use it majorly when uh, I want to cut off a particular, maybe I want to remove all the meat, all the people, all the meat department, I want to remove their data, I'll just sort. You see all the meat you know, come to one place, but now remove them. So, but for tables, for tables, the advantage of using a table is that when you table table makes it things a lot easier. When you convert your data like this to table, you can do what we call quick analysis on it. You can do what we call quick analysis on it. The major analysis that Excel does is using pivot tables. Or for those that are doing statistical, statistical analysis, that is a, a data analysis tool pack that Excel comes with. That that one we'll do it in our research class because I'm going to use how to teach us how to analyze data using Excel and data in case you don't have any statistical software and you want to use Excel to analyze your research data. There is a particular tool pack called data analysis tool pack that you can add. It's not it doesn't come with Excel naturally, but you can add it and then use it to analyze data. So if you look at your own Excel, you may not have this. Let me just see. Okay. When you go to your data, you will not you will not see this. But because I have reported it, tools for financial and scientific data analysis. So it can now give me mean, median, mode, standard deviation, all those uh, statistical stuff. So tables help you to do what we call quick analysis. Okay, so let me convert this to a table by saying control T. That's a shortcut. Some people will tell you, no, come here and say insert, come to insert, and insert table is the same thing. Why? For me, I like shortcuts. So um, just highlight. Remember, how do you Okay. How do you highlight quickly in Excel? Instead of coming to highlight manually like this, you use Control Shift arrow key down. Control Shift arrow key down. You can highlight all your cells all at once. Control Shift arrow key down. You can highlight all your cells all at once. Then. Say control T. Press OK. So you can now comfortably come and sort. 
see the quick analysis tab there. Use the quick analysis tool to quickly analyze your data. Some of the Excel was useful to color, uh, such as color, color certain and formulas. So when you click on the quick analysis, you can see you can create tables, you can put spark lines, you can uh, see have some average count total. You see, blah, blah, I, put, I put some, I said I'll put all the sum in the uh, below for me. Then I click on average, it will produce all the average count. It will produce all the count. Percentage total, it will produce it for me. Running total. So this is quick analysis. That's what I'll call it. And chart. You can quickly visualize your data. See it. Depending on what you want. Depending on what you want. So you can use color. Or icon sets or greater than you can tell yourself, please. All the veggies, all the categories that are greater than 50, use this particular color to grade it for me and stuff. So, once a, your data is in a table form, you can do a lot. But when you leave it bare like that, they say, We where you put it, just the rows and column, there is not so much you can do. So, the quick analysis. Has formatting, it has shafts. You see, some of you see some of cells here. And everything in October, November, and December. All right, it has totals, it has tables, and it has parklets. So that's a quick analysis for you. So one of the confidence that tables gives you is the confidence of having calculated columns. You could type a formula once and it gets automatically filled down for you. Let's see, how does that work? Instead of you filling it, select the cell under total. Press alternate equal to. Press enter. Did you just see that? That alternate equality that we used to get our sum in the in the in the sum uh, uh, when we did sum, you can use it here because because the cell now is a table. Once you do it for the first cell, it automatically gets filled down for all other cells. So you don't use to, you don't need now to use your hand to drag it down. No. So you say sorry. Alternate E, enter. Everything gets dragged down. All right. You can also add more columns down like this. Okay. Okay. At this point, I want to know whether we are following and whether we are catching um whether we are catching skills already. Are we? Before I go to the final two. I hope you are following. You have any yes, questions? Sir. So far? Yes, sir. All right. Do you have any questions so far? One question I want to ask is the final this thing that you just did. You, you did uh, alternate E, right? Is it the same yes. thing? The alternate uh, equals to still, still the same thing? Equal, yes, 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 yes. Not alternate E, sorry. Alternate equal to. Alternate equal to, okay. okay. I just wanted to know. So, okay. This will save you time. So far, there is no conditional statement. And it is some you want to do. Just use your alternate report. It gives it to you. And then your table, your data is a table. You are good to go. Total rules. Okay. So let's look at total rules in tables. Just give me a minute, please.
Mr. Chisom, if you're here, uh, we can't hear you. Your mind is muted, please. I'm back, sir. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, go ahead. Okay, okay. okay. All right. So, another convenience way in tables are table total rules. Instead of typing in some formula, Excel can actually make that total for you with a flip of a switch. Okay, let's look at how that works. And the same goes for the average formula and many others. So let's look at how that will work. It says select any cell within the table on the right. Okay, I have not this particular formula, not my convenience. Right, let's check it out. Select any cell within the table on the right. All right, I'll select this cell. At the top of the Excel window, table two design will appear. That's correct. Table design here. On that tab, click total row. Okay, the total is, okay, I see, I see. The total is uh, added to the bottom of the table. But if you wanted to know the average, click the cell with 24,000, yeah? And then look for average. Oh. All right. All right. So what we just did, of course, this is one of the advantages of having your data in tables. You could easily switch it up just by selecting any cell any, uh, here. Coming to table design, under table design, you see total row. So you can just have your total row, and then from here, from here, you can now switch them. From here, you can now switch them up to average one count, one number, so one minimum, maximum, uh, some standard deviation variance. All right. Let's go to drop downs. Please listen very well in this place. We are getting to uh, the main data stuff. That is what we we'll call data validation in Excel, generally, not just in Excel. But in Excel, it works well. There are some times uh, you will get data or you want to enter data, but you want to specify what that column will take and what it will not take. If you understand what I'm saying, you want to enter data. Let's say you uh, did a study, a research, or you are getting data from whichever way. Especially if it is a primary data that you want to enter into Excel. But you want to make it in such a way that age will be restricted to only 18 to 21. Or that um, gender will only be male and female. So if someone wants to enter another age that's not between 18 to 21, the school will reject it. It will not even accept it at all. That's all called to validate a, a column or a row. We call it data validation. Your ability to specify a particular type of data in a row and say, please, anything that is not this, don't accept. It helps us, the advantage that it helps us to minimize um, it, it helps us to minimize outliers and uh, and uh, in some ways also missing data too. So let's look at this, a drop, drop down list. The drop down list, how to ensure people enter valid data. So it makes sense that drop down a greater part of large group of people called data validation. Okay, there are other data validation methods you can restrict entry to just whole numbers, dates, or even minimum or minimum amount. Let's use this for example. These are list of foods. And then let's have their department. Drop down list, make data entry easier for people. This is how to do one. We want only three department names to be valid entries for each of the food on the right. Those departments are 
produce meat and bacon. So this apple, where does it fall? Apple falls in produce. Apple is not meat. Apple is not bacon. Beef, where does it fall? Meat. Banana, where does it fall? Produce. Lemons, where does it fall? So like that, like that, like that. So it's either all these foods here produce bitter bacon. So how do you validate this cell to only take only these three entries? Any other person that is trying to put any other thing, if you say no, to reject it. So drag the yellow cell here. Come to the data tab. That place that we did the text to column. Go and look for data validation. It's there. First of all, you need to highlight the cell way that you want to validate. Look for data validation. Yeah. It. Excel will ask you, what do you want to validate? What do you want to allow into this cell or into this column? You say, I want to allow whole numbers. If you say whole number, it will tell you, oh, yeah, specify the whole number. That's my place. List, date, time. Like, so this particular uh, produce, meat and bakery, what is it? It is called list. Not, it's not whole number, it's not decimal, please. It's called list. So when you click on list, it's either you write it out somewhere and then you can put the source or you type it manually. You type produce or type it exactly the way it will appear. You could use a delimiter called comma. You can say produce like this, meat and bakery. No, you are not typing a statement. Say produce comma meat comma bacon. This is the way we put it. So anything that is not this trick, sorry, the cell will not accept. So for well, somebody that may looks at this will not know that it has been validated till he wants to enter something that is not that. So here, apple, where does apple belong? Produce. Uh -huh. So once I type it, I say will pick it up. Where does beef belong? Belongs, sorry. Beef is what? Meat. Excel will pick it up. Where does banana belong? Produce. Excel will pick it up. This one, produce. Uh, I don't know this food though. Still produce. Um, okay. All right. Out of kid, uh, I don't know this too. Mm, let's assume it's, it sounded like bakery to me. Okay. Let's say bakery, bakery, chicken. What well, bread is bakery, okay? Chicken is uh, meat. Cookies is um, bakery. Bakery, bakery. Cakes, bakery. Pies. Bakery. Bakery, okay. So what about if I want to type, if I want to put, um, um let's say, um, Vegetable. <laughs> or vegetable. Do you see? Do you see what Excel will tell me? This value doesn't match the data registration restriction defined for this cell. You get. So data validation, you can use it to actually program a cell to take only a particular type of data. But the person that you may give it to will not will, may not know that that uh, column or that those group of columns have been validated or programmed. Yeah, except when he wants to enter the data that is not correct. So he helps you to minimize data cleaning. Imagine where you people have entered this thing very well, like this. Okay, let's try and see if you can enter small letter bakery. Did you see the way he corrected it immediately? It's just small, I use small letter. Yes. Ah, so he corrected it. Yes, sir. All right, so this is data validation for you. Okay. The, but the best practice, instead of typing it manually in that list, that's why I said you can type it out somewhere. Type it out as a table. Uh -huh. So let's do the same thing. Come here, come to data validation, come to a uh, list, then come here and select it. Uh -huh. Please, please, let me mention this. 
Whenever you see dollar sign before a column and a row, we are going to uh, talk about that tomorrow. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. We are, we are when we deal on references. Whenever you see dollar sign before a column and a row, it means that that column and that low that that row is locked. This is column F, row thirty two. To column F, row thirty two. Both column F and row thirty two, and to both column F and row thirty four are all locked. Cell locking. I'm going to learn that tomorrow. Okay, so. The same way we validated it here. So produce um needs so like that like that like that. And now input your your cell. So that this is all about data validation. It's important. Uh please, there are some things there are some things here. I will not I also want to teach show you guys, especially those of us in research. It may not be contained here, so I will mention it. I'll mention it. Our class remains um how many hours now? Okay, today is an introduction, so we may not uh may not exhaust all the time that we have. So once we are done with this, I will we'll also show you one or two other things and then we'll now do tomorrow. Okay, so analysis. Analysis. How do you use Excel to analyze data quickly? This one that I'm doing is level one analysis. There's another one called pivot table. Is uh, by next week we should be there. Next week Saturday we should do pivot table. Is much much more uh, more. Let me not say a bit advanced than this. Yeah, but let's just do the normal quick analysis that Excel does. So here is how to analyze data quickly. So that you can spot patterns or trends. Click and drag to the uh okay. I've even touched on this self uh, quick analysis. I've touched on it. Click and drag to select all cells on the right. All cells on the right, and click this button the lower right corner. So this is it. We call it quick analysis. All right. On the panel that appears, click data bars. Let's look for data bar. You see data bars. So Excel will use larger bars for greater amounts. So this is hundred and ten thousand dollars. It's larger than this, larger than this, larger than this. This is two hundred thousand dollars. So like that. You see. So once somebody, even if they remove this amount, you ordinarily will know that the amount here is larger than the amount here, and then the one here is larger than the one here. So it, it inserts a quick data by inside your data. All right. Clear the format. Let's remove it. Okay. So let's quickly make a chart. You can always use the insert tab and create a chart, but here's another way to make a chart using the quick analysis button. This time though, we use the keyboard shortcut. So let's select our data. Here's the quick analysis. Click inside the cell. Now, note that this cell, note that this is a table already. So all our shortcuts can work. Remember if it's a table, you may not even need to. Select everything. Say, click a cell inside the data to right? I've done that. Say, Control Q. Control Q, that's quick analysis. It will pop up. On that panel, click on Shots. So let's see, first close that button. All right, so this is our first chart. This is our first graph. So if I ask you, I'm not comfortable with this graph because it is not displaying the, it's not displaying the, okay. 
It's not displaying the uh, November. I'm not the one that will show me. It's just saying series one, series two, series three. It's supposed to be October, November, December. You see, so that's why I said this is just a level one transition. But if you want, normally, if you want to do this, you use pivot table. Pivot table uh, will identify this. But it's okay. Let me try it again. Analysis. Uh -huh. This is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking for. So in October, we had what was the highest sales in October? Was it salad? Was it sandwich? Was it a chicken? Was it vegetable? In October. Looking at this graph. I think it was uh, salad and beef. These two. Salad and beef. Salad and salad. beef. Yeah. Salad and beef. Okay. And for December, the highest was standing tall here is beef. Beef was sold beef. more. Of course, it's understandable. That's Christmas time. So many people are eating it. Um, November, the product that was sold more the beef too. So beef is the most sold product. Chicken too. The sales of chicken rose in December. Unlike uh, it used to be in other months. Of course, that was a Christmas period too. So it's understandable. So this is it. Now, these lines here are called grid lines. Grid line, you can remove them. I don't like my shirt having them. You come to the shirt uh, element and deactivate it, toggle it off. So it will go. This guy here is all called legend. This is what helps you to explain the shirt. If you toggle it off, it will go. Or you, you, you need it so that you can be able to explain what this color, different color means. Now, you can actually take it to the right, to the top, to the left, or to the bottom. It was at the bottom before, but now at the right side. This is what I call your data level. When you click on data level, the actual value should come and stay on top of the level, but it looks too crowded, so I wouldn't put it. Or your axis title. So these are the components of this chart. Then if you want to make these bars bigger, these bars, maybe you plotted the graph in Excel and you want to make the bars bigger, that's, that's so tiny or that's so slim. What you do is that you click on, you right click on the bar. This is watch what I'm doing. You right click on the bar and you say format data series. Format data series, see it here, this guy. And you decrease the gap width. Look at what we call the gap width here. Sorry, this gap width, you decrease it. As I'm decreasing it, the bars are increasing in size. So, this is how you can edit your graph. See that they're looking so um, close to each other, which I don't want. Let me leave it how it was before. So, but that is how, so far, in case tomorrow you want your bars to be bigger or something, just right click on it, format data service, and decrease the gap width. So, that is it. This is how we make quick, um, quick plus. For so this, as I repeated before, this, this graph is not flexible. I can't just remove um, this and put another variable, except I use the pivot table on the pivot chart. That one allows me to actually even make the graph interactive self. So tomorrow we are going to do data cleaning and the data Excel functions. I say that there's no stuff in the Excel functions, how to use them one after the other, most of all the functions we use. And then how do you clean data? That's tomorrow. Then in the Saturday next week, we're going to do data visualization in Excel, pivot table, and um, what else? 
and the interactive dashboard, how to create interactive dashboards. So, so that we can start Power BI quickly. All right. Please, do you have any questions? Okay, before I get to questions, there is what we call spark lines. There are small, small graphs. Spark lines, there are small, small graphs. So the same way, control Q. We start spark line here. It can be a form of a line or a column or a win or loss for people that do finance, life finance data. So spark lines. A spark line is showing you the trend. You see, from, from $30,000 to $15,000 to $20,000. You see how it goes from $30,000. To fifteen thousand to so okay. Sorry, is this the description of from October? That's yes, still the same thing. So fifty thousand dollars. Fifteen thousand. Yes. Then it declined. Yeah. And then came up a yeah. bit on twenty. Exactly. And then it went. It went back to that. Here we had a steady increase. Okay. See this. That is still in 25,000 sales in the, from bakery in October and December. It increased in, no, in, in, in November. It increased in December. It increased too. Yeah, we had a steady decrease. Here yeah, too, we had a steady decrease. So if we just look at the graph and indicate the patterns of increase and decrease, increase and decrease, like that, like that, like that. So that is spark lines for you. If you don't like this one, you can play. You can play them. And they try and use another type. Maybe cool. All right, so this is um like that, like that, like that. This is a gradual increase. This is a gradual dip. So the opposite of this is this and this too. So those are spark lines for you. Those are spark lines for you. Any question, please? Not for now, not for now. There's no question from my end as well. All right. Please, pardon me, the material for this particular class will be ready tomorrow. Uh, I don't have it here now. That's why we can't go for that. So tomorrow we'll start with basic formatting. Um, basic formatting, okay. We look at conditional formatting. We look at named ranges, how to convert this, this particular um, um, name set to this particular, um, what was it? To named, to put in names. Small, small things, yeah. I don't see how it works. It makes your data easier to understand and your formulas easier to write. And then we are going to also look at cell reference. I told I told you that there are three types of references: relative, absolute, and mixed. And then how what does a dollar sign mean when you see it in front of a cell? What does it mean? When you see it in a column, when you see it in a row, when you see it in both column and row. Okay, relative, absolute, and mixed reference. Uh -huh. These are the formulas we are going to look, basic functions we are going to look at. And what they are useful. The if function, the if and, and then these other words. All right, so um, our, introduct our introductory classes, 
I believe I did a lot. You've seen a lot of functions. Um, from tomorrow, please only have the paid participants in here. Um, I know if if you don't have enough money or something, you can just pay some five percent after the after two weeks. That's um by the at least by the towards the end of April you can finish up the payment. Please, I it took me time and energy to bring up this material so that you guys can understand quickly. So thank you everyone. See you we'll meet tomorrow. All right, thank, thank you very you. much. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Hey, before 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 you go, sir. I don't okay. know. Can we get the record there? The yes, session? yes. I'll drop. Are we all in that group? Like that was our group. Is it, are we all there? Yes, yes, yes. I think for me, I'm there. Drop, let me drop it there now. And then secondly, you made mention that uh, you you have forwarded the materials for the lectures to. So. They are very see me. I didn't receive my. I just read yes, it. Yes, yes. Oh, you, you just read it. Okay, okay, okay. Send your email to me. Let me forward it to you. Okay.